We're here with Jim McNeil from NetScout, executive producer of Lo and Behold, and Werner Herzog, of course, the illustrious director behind Lo and Behold, a new movie about the internet, technology, all that is possible and all that may one day be possible. What was it about technology and technology right now that prompted you to make this film? Uh, there's a curiosity in me that has taken me to all these projects, and it doesn't really matter whether I shoot in a, a Paleolithic cave in southern France with paintings 32,000 years back or looking into the world of the internet uh, and in the future possibilities and looking into where we are heading, in which direction are we are heading. So um, I think I, I can bring some sort of a, of a look at the whole thing that in a way illuminates an, an audience because it's not technical or so. It's, has a lot of humor, by the way, and, and it has a certain depth of conversations in it. One of the things that struck me watching the film is how much, on the one end, we all engage with technology, and it's almost a seamless part of our lives, and yet we don't stop and think about, first of all, how it works, and also what the implications are. Was that part of the goal here, too, to kind of get us to stop and reflect? We're all on our phones 24 hours, and yet we never really contemplate it. Yeah, how it works is, is not that interesting. Yeah, you go and study uh, electrical engineering, but uh, what does it do to us that we live with a cell phone? And it's easier for me to, to have a clear contour of what's going on because I don't have a cell phone. And it's not because I'm nostalgic, I do it for cultural reasons. I'd like to sit with you and see your face. I, I'm here with uh, Jim. We, uh, uh, we didn't have any technical discussion. We never had a real contract. Actually, uh, we function on a handshake. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like uh, about a contract. They always go right, a handshake. And right. if you have a Hollywood contract, 140 <laughs> pages, it, it spells it spells disaster. disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Jim, I, that's a, a good moment to ask you about, you know, NetScout really uh, funded this film and, and believed in Werner's vision for it. What was it about, the, about what Werner wanted to do and what the movie is trying to do that you felt was so important to get out there? Well, we wanted people to understand that they're living in a very historical time. You know, just in the past 30 to 40 years, this phenomenon, this connected world, has permeated every part of life. Mm -hmm. And when you, if you don't stop and think about it, you really don't get it. You don't understand that your every day is being driven by this ubiquitous connectivity. So we want people to stop and pause and just ask themselves for a moment, what would be different if it wasn't there? Or what would be different if it wasn't working the way we have come to assume it will work all the time? And that, I mean, the movie does get into some fascinating potential scenarios if the internet were to go yeah. down. What did you, there's, there's always a question here, uh, Werner, when it comes to technology is, you know, is it good, is it bad? And of course it's, it's both. What conclusion did you come to about no, technology as a force in our life? No, we should know in which world we are living. Um, and it's not only technologically wise or so. We should, I think as thinking people, we should uh, try to scrutinize our environment and know in which world do we live. This is why I watch uh, uh, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo, for example. <laughs> it's, you may not believe it, but you have to know in which world you are living. Right, right. Same thing with the internet and all these things. And uh, of course, uh, uh, as the internet itself has a certain fragility and vulnerability, uh, I advise to, to do certain things. Read, 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 read. It gives you a much deeper insight uh, and more conceptual thinking about the world in which we live than just checking the uh, internet for, for information. And then, for example, as it is vulnerable, everybody speaks about, ah, we, it's a time now to get rid of cash, of cash money. No, wrong, because if the internet is down, you cannot even pay your hamburger right. at the hamburger joint because it's right. the cash register so is connected to the internet. You better have uh, dollar bills on you in small, right. in small denomination, one dollar, five dollar bills, a lot of them because mm -hmm. yes, you can buy a hamburger for a hundred dollar bill, but they can, cannot mm -hmm. give you change. Right, right. No, and all the, there's so, so many fascinating small and big consequences. Yeah. One of the larger ones, and, and you have a great phrase in the film, or I think one of yeah. the, your subjects does, is that this is not just technological, but it's theological. What do you mean by that? And, and, and in what ways are these consequences now spiritual? Let's avoid the, the term spiritual, but uh, of course it has to do with uh, a new definition of self. 
It has to do with a new definition of, of humanness. And when you are interacting with a robot, for example, you, you better think what is the role of the robot and what is your role in, in, in this world. So uh, we, we have to, to find new ways to, to deal with it and of course new, new forms of ethics uh, that are emerging slowly. But yeah. ethics that so, govern not only yeah. people but govern computing because we're moving into a time when that's going to become extremely mm -hmm. important. Right. Well, and that's one of the questions. You mentioned the robots. You, have, you raised the, of one of many astounding sort of potential scenarios you raised yeah. is the idea of robots falling in love. What, did you, what, what sort of inferences or insights did you come to making this film about the whole AI side of it and whether machines could one day, mm -hmm. you know, people talk about rising up, that, that's reductive, but, but have a consciousness that we're only beginning to consider. Well, the point is you're on the cusp mm -hmm. of something that mm -hmm. none of us can anticipate. You know, we made the note in the film that Lawrence Krauss said, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, science fiction envisioned flying cars and, and, and talking, you know, watches and, and video watches, but they didn't envision the internet. Today, how do you envision what the future of robotics and artificial intelligence is? And when you know what computing is going to be yeah. and the capabilities that are coming our way, we're accelerating it. It's going yeah. faster and faster. We're growing exponentially. So people should just buckle in. You know, what's happened in 40 years is nothing compared to what's going to happen in the next 10. Yeah. What, what for me, for me there's, uh, of course, I do get answers, but uh, sometimes it's more important to, to ask certain questions, and there's a lingering question throughout the film. Um, the uh, war historian Clausewitz, Napoleonic Times, a Prussian war, his, uh, war theoretician, once famously said, uh, War sometimes dreams seems to dream of itself, mm. which is a phenomenal yeah. sort of observation. And my question is, does the internet dream of itself? So, and no matter what sort of answer you get, doesn't doesn't matter. You have to come up with the right questions. Mm. And um, in throughout the film, this has been posed to various of the people with whom I had a conversation. I love, the that yeah. Yeah. I love that line about the internet dreaming of itself and, and just the levels yeah. of subconscious. Did, did you come away from this film as a, as a human, not just as a director, but as a human feeling, I know this is a little bit uh, binary, but more optimistic about where technology can take us as a, as a civilization or more pessimistic? Uh, I know it's complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too much a black and white sort of a sure. zero or one kind of question. No, I, I, I just got deeper insight into it and I, I know how to arrange my life uh, in a way adequate to what's going on. And one of the answers that I have, I had before already, do not use a cell phone for cultural reasons. Uh, or use uh, the internet as a source of information only in a very limited, in the shallow sort of level. I uh, went online and checked out weather in, Salt, uh, in, in uh, Park City, Utah. Mm -hmm. And this is why I brought <laughs> a, a warm uh, fleece with me, sure. because I knew it would be, it would be kind, kind of cold and snowy here. Right. So that's fine. But the deeper things that, that uh, have to do with our existence, with the deeper f levels of what we are, you just don't do it through the internet. I say, what was it? What specifically does does make you worry about a cell phone or make you think there are too many it's negative no, implications? No, I'm not. I'm not nostalgic or anything, and I'm not vilifying the uh, <coughs> the cell phones. But I I want to to be with one uh, with a family at the table, for example, having dinner, and the teenage daughter uh, separates herself out of everything and under the table she's doing a texting so she's not there and she's not a member of the family anymore right. so of course uh, there are deep deep dangers in in all this and uh, the dependence on uh, uh, on these cell phones is kind of completely out of bounds I know we have to wrap. I just want to ask you, you talk yeah. about Park City and, you know, you've been here with Grizzly Man before, which was a very different kind of story about not man versus technology, but man versus nature. What does it mean to be back at Sundance and why do you think this is a good venue for, for these messages? Oh, I have a dream for Sundance and I scared the festival because in my, in my youth I was a ski jumper and my dream was become world champion, champion of ski flying. 
And when you come into Park City, there are these two Olympic mm -hmm. ramps, you see it on the right hand side. And I said, prepare the ramp for me. I'll get myself <laughs> a pair of these gigantic skis and I will leave Sundance Film Festival ballistically flying. <laughs> I want to fly. <laughs>